Welcome to this week's Rogers McKee YouTube video. In this week's episode, we're going to be discussing mistakes that people make when choosing the right recruitment company to work for. Let's go. Welcome to this week's Rogers McKee YouTube video. So in this week's episode, we're going to look at the mistakes that some people may make when choosing what recruitment company to work for. So if you're getting into recruitment, if you're aiming to get into recruitment, if you've got some good sales background, or if you've got some recruitment experience, in the majority of cases, you're gonna have two, three, four options. You're gonna be able to command a number of interviews. You're gonna have options. You're gonna effectively have a pick of which companies you, you want to go and work for. And I've just listed four mistakes that I think people make and things that I've seen, mistakes that I've seen people make when choosing the company that they're going to work for. So the first one is that people get blinded by the check. So what do I mean by that? Well, ultimately they may have four options on the table and one of them's paying a little bit more or it may even be paying significantly more on the basic than the others and that's the one that they go for. Um, they don't take into account any other considerations it's paying the most money in terms of a basic and that's the one they go for. If you're good in recruitment, your basic salary should be massively eclipsed by any commission that you might make. So for me, looking solely at the basic and, and picking the biggest one is the wrong thing to do when choosing a recruitment company. However, following on from that, the second mistake that I think people make is that they're blinded by the highest billet. So invariably when I'm interviewing candidates, I will get asked pretty regularly, especially by training recruitment consultants, what is your biggest biller billing? Some people might think that's a, a reasonable question to ask. However, by definition, the highest biller is a one-off. So Yes, you may believe or you may want to become the highest biller and you might want to know what's possible. But if that person has been doing this job for 25 years in the same market with the same client base and building their knowledge, um, it's very unlikely as a trainee that you're going to come in and challenge that highest biller for a long time. If that highest biller has been at the company for 10, 5, 10, 15 years, it's feasible not guaranteed, but it's feasible that any incoming leads go to that person because they can be trusted to do the job. So any outreach that the employer does, any of their social media marketing, any of their wider networking and, and, and uh, marketing and, and advertising, any jobs that come in from that may well be filtered through to this highest billet. So he may be getting or she may be getting all of the inbound leads. I think what's better to ask is what is your average biller doing? So how much does your average biller make each year? Because it's a lot easier to become part of the average than it is to become the highest. Like I say, you may, and, and I'd love all of my uh, employees to want to be the highest biller and strive to be the highest biller and we've got some really competitive people within the business but ultimately at the end of the year there's only one of them that's going to reach that pinnacle and obviously invariably it's the people that have been with the business the longest not because we filter the inbound leads to them but they've had time to hone the relationships and build the relationships um, somebody coming in at an entry level has got a lot of work to do to get to that level. So don't be blinded by the highest biller. If the highest biller is doing a million pounds a year in revenue or a million dollars a year in revenue and the average of everybody else is 50k, that's not a great place to work as a trainee in my opinion. If the highest biller is doing 250k but the average biller is doing 200k, it's a much better environment to be in for me so don't be blinded by the highest biller what's the average biller doing nail that find that out a lot of people number three don't pick a market that they're interested in and this always surprises me you don't necessarily need to have an interest in it when you get into it per se 
But I feel like you need to develop an interest in the market that you're working in because recruitment, you need to retain a lot of information. You need to build a lot of knowledge. You need to ask a lot of questions, um, especially if you're getting into, into recruitment as a trainee. You've really got to be a sponge for information and retain that information. And it's so much easier to retain the information if it's a market that you've got interest uh, an interest in, that you understand, um, that you may have past experience in potentially. So for me, I know absolutely nothing about technology. I'm just about managing to film these YouTube videos, to be quite honest. Tech is not something that I've got any interest in and, and, and I'm clueless when it comes to technology. The thought of working in a tech recruitment business scares the life out of me because I know nothing about it. I've not really got a lot of interest in it. And I feel like I'd really struggle to build up that knowledge base that's gonna make me stand out from the crowd. And in recruitment, there's a lot of people um, in the market that are competing for the same roles and the same candidates and you need to stand out and knowledge is obviously power um, and ability to demonstrate your skills in the market is, is another one for me it uh, not so much so i have an interest i qualified as, a, as an accountant at university did a, an accountancy degree so i feel like if i was recruiting accountants i'd obviously have more of a knowledge over what they do what the role entails um, some of the questions that I might need to find the information for I may already know. So what have you got previous experience in or what have you got an interest in? And like I say, it's not necessarily something that you've got to have an interest in now, but if you are going into that industry or that sector, you've got to feel like that's a, a sector that you could get interested in and you would be um, inquisitive about and, and you'd build up that knowledge and you'd soak that knowledge up. And the last one, number four, they don't find out enough about the culture of the team. So all businesses out there will portray their team to be the best in the world. Uh, they've got a great team culture. They go out on, on team holidays or weekends away or they climb mountains or they go out for a drink on a Friday or everybody gets on really well. And that's fine. Everybody will be trying to say that. And, and you do want that to a degree. You also want people that are going to challenge you. You're going to want people that are going to pull you along, that are going to really drive your career forward. If you're going into an organization where the people within that business aren't driven, aren't motivated, don't massively want to succeed, you're going to become, similar to the environment that you're in, it's very difficult to go into that kind of environment and be really driven, really motivated, and really hammer the phones and really build relationships if the people around you aren't, aren't in that mould. So find out about the culture of the team. What are the people like? How successful are they? Where do they want to be? Where's the business come from And where, to, to, compared to where is it now? And how's that been driven? And is it that been driven by the people out there um, that, that are still within the business or have they been and gone you know have they taken it from start up to 20 million pound turnover but they've now gone and what's left is people that you don't want to be hanging around with um, what's the culture of the team get under the skin of the, of the team that you're going to be working in to understand that the people there are going to drive you along again especially if you're coming into recruitment as a trainee you're going to want support you're going to want to be able to listen to people on the phone and pick up ideas and and understand how people are being successful and what they're saying that's making them successful and if there's none of that it's going to be really difficult for yourself so the fact that they might go on team team holidays to malaga or marbella or wherever it is they go and that's great but if you're not going to have the opportunity to do that because there's nobody there that's going to help you and nurture and drive you along or the team isn't a team of people that want to achieve high performing results it may be the wrong choice for you so understand the culture if you don't find out about the culture of the team, you could be setting yourself up to fail. And what you don't want to be doing is making too many mistakes early in your recruitment career and being in the wrong company for you or the wrong market for you. Because once you start to make that move two or three times in quick succession, companies will start looking at your CV and trying to understand why, why that move is, is being made pretty frequently. So there you have it. I think there's four mistakes that people make when they're looking for which recruitment company to go and work for so take that on board if you are looking at getting into the market or if you are in the market and potentially looking for for a move 
Um, we'll be back at the same time next week with our next video. However, if you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do. We're bringing out content every week at the minute. We aim to really double down on the content that we are putting out there. And we want it to go out to as many people as possible. And the more people that subscribe to the channel, the more people will see the videos. We'll see you at the same time next week.